Welcome to the Feedback Loop. Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It's uh, Monday morning. It's um, We're still practicing our social distancing, but we've been practicing our social distancing here since September because we're all, we've been remote the entire time. Welcome to this world for the rest of you. Um, I was just talking about um, the next chapter that I'm working through right now on components. And uh, if you're in the interface design program, you are heading headlong toward this chapter and the, the, the associated exercises. Um, but Kara was, Kara, Kara was mentioning on Discord how it sounded like it was an interesting um, topic. And it is because uh, basically components grew out of, there was a sequence of things that happened. Um, the smartphone revolution started in 2007 and that led that really pushed a lot of things forward i, I actually included a link to the first uh, to the first debut to the debut of uh, or the first presentation of the iphone where steve jobs is is um, presenting the safari web browser and it's a full web browser in your hand and he's pinching and zooming or double tapping to get to particular areas of the new york times homepage or to get to particular areas of the Amazon homepage and um, it dawned on me and then it was like creakily loading there was like this awkward silence for like 30 seconds where he's just waiting for Amazon to load on the screen and what you discover in that instance is you remember that there was a world where responsive design didn't exist there was a world where web typography does did not exist there was a world where bandwidth you know we we just didn't wake up with the bandwidth that we have now and there are still places in the world that that lack the bandwidth that we are blessed to have and i know that there are even other countries that have blazing fast 5g capabilities that we don't have currently in the states so I, so I understand that, that there's these different levels, but when it all started, all that was missing. And one of the things that's interesting is that it kicked off this wave of innovation. And one of the innovations that we can't forget about was that HTML and CSS just had not moved forward at all for like, I don't know, five, seven years prior to that. Like there had been this lull so so the smartphone really kind of kicked things back into gear and this led to innovations in responsive design and that led in, that built into another movement that was happening around the same time open source um, and the open source movement was pretty much driven by the development side of things but it began to bleed over into design and that's right about the time that we got bootstrap and we got foundation and these frameworks that really helped us wrap our heads around responsive design as a collective. And these things were great. We said, oh my God, bootstrap, everybody's gotta use bootstrap. And you blinked and everything looked like bootstrap. It's like we, we figured out how to adjust the CSS, the color and, and you know just a little bit of the CSS and everybody just used bootstrap. And Bootstrap itself was not the enemy. Our, the enemy was our, our tendency to just, oh, it's, it's done. It's just done. Slap our logo in there, it's done. We got really lazy. And people began to react against that. And that's where components really come, come into play. Because they're in the re rejection of bootstrapification Com people begin to say you know what our company is going to do its own bootstrap essentially but we're going to expand on it and we're not necessarily just going to give it to everybody but we'll, but we'll tell you how we did it we'll tell you what our thinking is behind it and that's where component-driven design and design systems 
were born, basically. Um, everybody's got their slightly different take on it. And um, I write about some, uh, some agencies. Um, I write about Jean, uh, Gina Ann, who runs Clarity. I write about Brad Frost, who wrote Atomic Design. Um, and then I look at how some different agencies use it. I look at how the BBC and their global, uh, it's gel, so it's global experience language. Everybody's got a slightly different, uh, different way of talking about. We have different definitions. And if there's anything in design that is consistent, it is that we cannot agree upon what we call these things, um, including, you know, right down to the job title so that people hold. So, so it's been really interesting to write. Um, it's also been a real uh, pain in the butt because I don't want to make everybody read what it, you know, it just took me like, you know, what? five minutes and you know, we've been to, I've been here monologuing for five minutes talking about this but uh, why should you have to read like uh, I don't know 3,000 4,000 words about that I'm, I'm not even sure if that is interesting although what I probably will do because of the way the program is set up right now I will probably clip most of it away and put it off to the side so that if you are interested in diving down that rabbit hole it's there for you but I'm not going to make people that aren't completely the historic. You know, I, I'm a bit of a history buff, um, for better or worse. And I, I kind of dig in on things. I want to know where things came from. So, so that's why I write the way I do. Um, but with that said, I want to go ahead and jump in because um, actually it's a, it's a pretty light feedback loop this morning. Um, Eve uh, submitted her work last night. And um, oddly enough, it, it's been Eve, Eve, and Eve. The la Eve was last, the last submission and feedback loop. Um, uh, and you know what? What's interesting is we haven't actually looked at that. I haven't actually given Eve proper feedback in the feedback loop because she submitted her work after feedback loop was recorded on Friday. So this actually will be our, our first time looking at Eve's work as a group. So we might as well take a, take a peek. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, see if I can remember the proper keystroke, which I'd never do. Um, so this is the designing feedback um, exercise that she's worked through. And let's go ahead and jump in. Um, so there's states of activity. And one of the things that that um, if if we let's see, does she have the original? She does not have the original, which is fine, by the way. She's not meant. It's not meant that you keep the original. But Eve's working through, um, and I'm just going to hide the, hide these for a second. Eve's working through um, and basically coming up with the different states necessary. So we're talking about active state, hover state, um, um, and uh, what else do we have? Oh, yeah, select it, and then looking at how these, you know, how do we, how do we really create these different states that are necessary to tell to tell us what's happening, to give us feedback when, when we're clicking around on our page? And uh, the first thing she did was basically just added a little color so that, like having an orange button here would make sense. So you know she got in and created a little branding, which is kind of interesting because one of the first things you really need when you're creating components is like, okay, so what's my what are the underpinnings of this? What are my base colors? What's my base typography? Um, so here, uh, for hover, she's got, uh, like, uh, it just makes an underline. When something is selected, it's bold and a thicker underline. Uh, so, like, if I, if I navigate it to this pricing page, that's what happens. Um, so that orange that she, that she had was, um, was for um, the default. So, like, when you load the page, it's, it's orange to begin with. And then when you hover over it, it creates an outline and it reverses out the type because the type could, if, 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 the, if, the, if it went from orange to black, the type can't then also be black. And then finally, uh, when you press on it, the type goes bold. Um, so the, the interesting thing here is um, that's actually not the exact same way that material design would tell you to handle it. Um, and I, I do link to material design, but one of the things that I think is very interesting, I, I like material design, but I do think the contrast 
between states is very subtle. I don't necessarily know if it's a great experience from um, a feedback perspective. Um, I, I like the cleanliness of the design. I like the spacing usage. I like the guidance it gives you for typography. But when it comes to feedback, I think that it's a little too subtle. Subtle to the point that I think it actually goes against what we talk about with, with accessibility. Um, there's not enough difference for people to really see what's going on. So, uh, you know, I worked with Eve on that because at one point this was basically three versions of the same orange that had, you know, a little white or a little dark, like, like there was some tint thrown onto it. And it, it, didn't, it didn't do what this is doing. This is showing clear feedback that works very well. Um, and really, you know, this was the only spot, Eve, that I, I, I said I thought we had any issue. And I think you've addressed that, addressed that very well. Um, same thing over here. We, we took, a, took a stab at a Spanish site. And the important thing here is not necessarily that you know a foreign language. That's not, not the point. The point is um, basically getting, removing the focus on what is this section, what is this content, and worrying more about how do I provide feedback. And here, um, you know, Eventos, uh, you, you, it goes bold when you hover over. It's underlined when it's active, and that's all fine. And then when we, so, um, it's interesting. It's interesting that these are opposites of one another, um, because in the initial design, it's like this. There's a, there's an orange, and then there's the gray, and, or I'm sorry, well, it was black and then and then white, and she changed it to orange and gray, which is fine. What all this is trying to do is, is basically say this is our primary and this is our secondary. Um, I think I would really, if, if this is our secondary, you know, these both started out the same and then you change this one to the gray. I think I would move this one to the gray as well so that there's a clear, like right now you went from having two different states or two different styles which is fine, you want, want to have a primary and a secondary, to having three. And I think I would pull these two into alignment together so they can both be that secondary state. Um, and, and I really believe that if you did that, um, you know, you, you basically are saying that this, this default, that like these are, the, these are basically opposites of one another. Which, I guess you could, but I, I really feel like that, that this begins to be part of, this begins to be a primary when I really think the way you have, the way you have it here allows us to, this is the primary and this is the secondary. And if you use that secondary everywhere else, this really is truly the primary. And, um... I think you've got it solved here. I think this part of it just confuses it um, a bit. So that's that's how I would, how I would go about it. Um, I do like the fact that you that you brought it to a similar place. You know, you allowed basically the color to stand out, but then it moves. Um, but then it moves. But I, I don't necessarily know if I would go if if I would move in the opposite direction of your primary call to action. So that's my two cents on that. Let's, um, let's pull this back and let's go to part two here. Um, so the Eve now has been challenged with uh, creating an empty state and I th thought she did a really good job here basically coming in and saying, okay, there's a couple of different directions you can go. Um, you can create a form where you can import participants um, the interesting thing here is that they both, the, the bright blue, it feels like it's active. And I would suggest going the other direction with this, uh, using the light version of it for, 
because there's not a there's not a preferred here. This is this is two options, and either one would be equally welcome. Um, you can create a form, or you can Im import like with an existing uh, CSV or, or whatever. So I would I would actually flip this. I would go with create a form in light. I go with this in the outline, and then on click or hover, I would go with the blue. Um, simply because I'm, I'm trying to indicate action. Like there's an action that's occurring and I'm interacting and I want that, that feedback. Um, it could go the other way, just, just the way you have it. I just feel like the bright blue already, it, it just seems like each of these are already active. Um, and you've got two, so it's not really, it's, it's, it's both of them are jumping at you. This is probably opinion. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm venturing into the side of this is what I would do. Um, I want to make sure that you realize this. That does not mean that this is wrong. Okay, and there's a difference. So I'm just giving you opin my opinion on that. It's totally fine the way you have it. Um, and then finally, this is this was a really interesting one uh, because I really felt like Eve did a did an excellent job on this um basically she, she's this is confirmation and confirmation can go a couple of different directions um if you place the order you basically get a confirmation that the order has been placed and that's way different than if you cancel an order because when the confirmation occurs that is very dependent on what actually is happening so here the order's been placed and she created a confirmation page and all of this works and you can come down here and continue shopping if you want and it's a mirror mirror basic image of it over here um, it's canceled and when something is canceled you basically need to confirm that that is really what you want to have happen and, and the destructive actions or always something that we want to push in front of people and say, hey, listen, I know you said cancel. Is that really what you want to do? This is not go. This is not where we goad them into not canceling. Um, but you also want to use clear language. Like it, it's right now, it says cancel order. Are you sure you want to cancel this order? Um, you will lose all the all the items in your cart. This action can, cannot be undone. Are you sure you want to cancel this order? If she said yes, no, no sounds very close to cancel. Yes also sounds agreeable to cancel. So adding the comp extra bit of phrasing here, no, never mind, yes, cancel my order, makes it very clear. What's going to happen when I click, click this red button? I'm going to cancel the order because it says, yes, cancel my order. When we talk about microcopy um, and we talk about clarity of the action. This, you know, th that is exactly what Eve has done here. She's, she's added clarity to the action. And um, if there's anything like there, I've had people say, well, won't students just copy each other if you record these sessions and people can see what everybody's working on? And if clarity is what you decide to take from this and you insert that into your work, great. You're a better designer for it. Fantastic. I'd rather you not guess around about stuff like that. I'd rather you just use the clearest language possible so that people know when they interact with your work what you're actually doing. And you're not also also you're not being deceptive about it. So so, yeah, you know, yes, cancel, cancel my order. Um, do that every time and then she came back with and we talked about this like um, when you're when you've emptied the cart and you've canceled the order um, the this is the empty state okay and we talk about empty state in the chapter um, empty states are opportunities we talk about empty state and microcopy as well um, which makes me makes me it reminds me, I should just link to the microcopy uh, work that we've done because microcopy was, um, th this is so much about microcopy as well because you're having to write 
micro copy in here so i'm going to link to that um people that you know because people come to the content in so many different directions i can't count on somebody having crossed through micro copy before they make it to here so i'm going to link to that um because i feel like we're having we're, we've had a lot of these discussions but not from the perspective of how do we design it we've had these conversations about okay what are we writing um but it says um confirmation needed order canceled and then there's this opportunity here and we, we talked about it you know hey sorry this uh it's, it says we're sorry this one uh, wasn't the best fit for you but we're always updating our inventory and adding new options uh here's a 15 percent off discount code for when you find that perfect fit um you know in there the discount code bb15 um and previously <laughs> Previously, we had some, we had a very interesting, I, I call it interesting because we both had a, had a giggle, had a laugh about it because it said, in, instead it said, your order has been successfully canceled. And then, and then it said, go home, go back home. And, and, and the button was the, the, lang the language in the button was go back home. And it's like very, very harsh. <laughs> and we had a good laugh about that. But I, I think that. I think that you've softened it up. I also get, a, get questions a lot about uh, the centering of typography. This is a small enough bucket of type that I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, I did see on last week's portfolio of potluck, which we're doing again on Wednesday, I did see a, um, I did see a, a block of type that was like, I don't know, 200 words or so. And I just reacted very viscerally to it. So, so just know that if I haven't reacted viscerally to the centered type, that means it's a small enough like presentation that it's not going to dr draw my ire. Um, this is about as far as I go with it, though. So I want to make make perfectly clear, like I would not do a lot more type than this um, in in a centered orientation. But that said, Eve, I think overall, you know, you've you've done a lot of good work here. Um, so, you know, this is opinion. So I just want to call, I, I want to call, call it like I see it. I really think that, you know, this one is spot on. I like it. But the difference here is this is the only option. Okay. This is the only option when you've got a pair of equally good options. I think I would draw away from call, making them both hyper, like full throttle um bright and flip it the other way um and then over here i would just go for simplification you know i always want i always want there to be a couple of button options available but when we get past two i begin to go hmm do i really need the third one i don't know um checking over here on discord it looks like we're clear so what i'm going to do and i'm going to do this for your benefit and mine is I'm going to wrap up. And the reason I'm going to wrap up is because I'm in the midst of writing and editing components. And I want to get that out as quickly as possible. Um, not just for Eve and Luigi and Kara, but also for James and Katie and Tejil and Rebecca and Melanie popped back up this weekend. It's very interesting. I'm, I'm super excited to see if, if Melanie jumps back into the fray with this as well um but that will be um that will be something uh that we'll see we'll see very soon um but tell your friends tell your friends enrollments are open always happy to to grow the grow the the camaraderie here and um the cohort um i am doing uh, portfolio potlucks every wednesday at noon We've got a um, we got a almost full ship for Wednesday's edition, but um, but there is space there is space remaining. So if um, if you have a friend uh, that would like to, to take part, uh, feel free to share the link. I will drop that into Discord. Uh, so if you're looking for that, uh, feel free to to send that link to them. And otherwise, hey, Chris Courtney here, feedback loop. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all again tomorrow. Take care.